Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavec Movies. My name is John and this is going to be a video about what films I will not have in my collection. Now these films are quite extreme and they are quite um, controversial to a certain extent. Some films aren't. But these are films I personally will not ever put in my collection. Some of them are quite uh, well known, even Oscar winning performances uh, in the movies themselves. But I just can't go near them and I'll tell you in reason the reasons why in, in this video. Obviously, uh, I am a fan of uh, extreme horror. I mean, take this one here, Cannibal Holocaust, for instance. This has the most extreme animal cruelty you will ever see in any film, in my opinion. And I didn't get it for that. I got it for the fact I do think this film is a good film. This version here has the option to totally take out the animal cruelty. And it's, it, you can't even think that it was there when you were watching this film, which is a good way to do it. And I will always watch the non uh animal cruelty version of this film from now on. I have watched the uncut one quite a few times and now I have the option not to watch it. I choose not to watch it but this you couldn't say there was anything more controversial in the way of animal cruelty than this film. Also as well uh, I'm going to talk about some films that uh, do ha contain real life killings, real life murders in it. This film here does have some from the, the aid of um, TV broadcasts and stuff, stuff th things that were caught on camera it does contain scenes of autopsies as well. There is a longer Japanese cut on here, which has more um, stuff than, than the regular cut. Uh, but I do like it as a good documentary, or as it's called, a shockumentary. Um, it's, it's good in the sort of Mondo uh, lines that has this real life sort of murder running through this uh, through the, the uh, films. It's not a snuff film by any means. I don't think snuff films exist, but... Uh, this film here could be classed as that. I'm going to talk about a few more films in there that do have this, which I will not have in my collection. And also you can go down the exploitational route, and I think there's no more exploitation, exploitational film than Salo. Um, it is really disgusting film, but it's also, it's got a lot of, I'm going to say it's got a lot of pluses. It's got something in it that I do like is it in a film. I can appreciate it, but also there's a lot of stuff in here which would turn people off immediately. And I can understand anybody not liking any of those films, and maybe if they had a list of films they would never have in their collection, those three would be in their list. So this is the list that I've just compiled here. Uh, just talking about things that basically they just don't sit right with me or they're a little bit too emotional to watch. Uh, like again, I mean, I might have seen these films or not even want to go near them because of the, uh, the content in them. Most of them I have seen, so I've got an opinion on them. So the first one I want to talk about is, and this is in no particular order, but number one that is on this list is number one in the films that I would not have on the shelf. I think a lot of people can work out which one that was going to be as well. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Sophie's Choice. Now this deals with um, concentration camps, it deals with kids in concentration camps and this mother having to make the ultimate choice between her children which is just, it's just that if you were a father you would, or have children, you would understand how heart-wrenching this film would be and um, for that reason I cannot, I cannot actually physically, I have watched it a long time ago and I don't ever want to go back to that um, and that film would be too heartbreaking for me to watch. Another film that would be too um, emotionally draining for me to watch would be Schindler's List. I have seen bits of it. I don't like the fact that it's... Obviously, it's this is a true story. It's it's it's, it's a thing that happened in history. I know I'm quite aware of that. Um, and I do understand the, the meaning behind this film. This this fellow Schindler who made this list up to shave all these people from, um, from the concentration camp is an absolutely brilliant uh, thing to have on, on film. It should have been made. I'm not saying it shouldn't have been made. But just for me... I don't think I could sit through it. I think it would be too um, too heart-wrenching for me uh, because of the subject matter in it. The next film is a film along the same lines called Life is Beautiful, and this stars two of my favourite actors, Roberto Benigni and Nicoletta Brasci, who is his real-life wife. And this takes this tells a story of they're in a concentration camp. I, don't, I haven't seen this film, but I know that I would have loved to see this film because of the two actors in it, but because of the subject matter, they've got a they've got to pretend that this concentration camp to their son is just a game and it's not real and that's how they can get this kid through this concentration camp I don't know how it ends or anything like that um, just the actual hearing about the story sounds very uh, emotional maybe too emotional for me to go near this next one is you could say it's well, it's not a remake of Cannibal Holocaust but it's kind of along them lines and the reason why I don't like it is because I've never seen it 
I don't like the fact that somebody, Cannibal Holocaust was made at a time when filmmakers didn't really know better. They should have never done the animal cruelty. That's, that's, and even the director says now he would have never done that on reflection. But I think that Eli Roth has made a sort of uh, capitalised and even um, sort of used Cannibal Holocaust as a platform to make a sort of sensationalistic film. And I don't think for that reason it's going to have enough merit. I like that the fact that Cannibal Holocaust is trying to tell a story and it does it does have a serious story behind it, which is quite interesting. A lot of people don't see that because of the animal stuff takes you out of the film and I can understand that. But The Green Inferno for me is one that is just a kind of a basic cash in on something that shouldn't have been cashed in on. And I do think that to me, I've never seen it, but it doesn't think I don't think it's going to bring anything to the table. I'll be any any way, in any shape or form, get anything out of this film and I think it's going to be too like not extreme but just too too unnecessary i'm gonna say the next film is a film called titty cut follies now this film is a documentary from 1967 and it's black and white and the the problem behind this film is that it's a documentary basically about um, people in a mental asylum and it is a mental asylum it's supposed it's not a really like a mental hospital like we have these days a psychiatric hospital this is a pure mental asylum in the 60s in america and the way that they treat the people in here who obviously are um you know handicapped and the way it's portrayed is a sort of documentary but if you've got to think about 1967 these things were done in a not different way to in our days so to see that in the, pay, the way the people are treats and the, the plight that they're in is just not a good film to see it's not a film you can take anything away from. It's quite disturbing in that fashion. The next film is a film from an established director. And I do like this director. And I have got some of his films. And I do rate his films quite highly. But when I saw this one, Antichrist from Lars von Trier. Excuse me. I thought to myself, I don't think there's anything more bleaker than this film. It's Obviously, it's got a no spoiler alert. But it's not a spoiler. The fact that these couple are trying to deal with the fact that their son's been uh, killed uh, accidentally and they're trying to deal with that that's fair enough it's not going to uh, it's not going to be a comedy but it's so absolutely depressing that um, it's one of the films you watch and it, it, there's some really really graphic scenes in here if you've seen the film you know exactly what I'm talking about and it's all right that's fair enough I could get past that it, uh, though they're horrible and um, really horrible but I don't think that um, there's any part of this film that lifts it up. If it might, if it lifted it up a little bit, but it just puts it just really just on it. You're on a downer when you see this film for me. Um, I think it's well done to a certain extent, but I don't think I get anything positive out of this film. The next one is a strange film because it's called The Bunny Game. And I think it's from 2011 and it stars the, the person that this this thing happened to. She was abducted and uh, tortured by uh, a long distance lorry driver and she reenacts the um the the crime in the back of a lorry with this this uh, this fella and it's graphic and it's nasty and it doesn't let up and I don't know why this person would have went back to do this again for the form of entertainment I'm gonna it's not even entertain it's not an entertainer film in any way shape or form. I may have missed a point in this film, but I did think that it was brutal, beyond brutalness, and I don't think that it was necessary. Maybe the woman needed to do it for a sort of cathartic exercise, but wow, um, it doesn't come across like that to me, if I'm honest. The next film is a film that I saw a long time ago, and it's called The Men Behind the Sun. Now, this tells a true story of when the Japanese were fighting the, giant, the Chinese in the war, the Second World War, and they used to sort of take the Chinese prisoners on, you know, as prisoners, and then used to experiment on them, and do anything they wanted to them. They apparently in this film used to treat them, they used to call them wood. They used to say, bring some more wood in, and then used to perform some uh, experiments on them. Now the film, it's it's not a nice film. There's some really, really awful things happen to people in here, uh, like scenarios that you think must have happened in real life, and for them things to happen would have been heartbreaking beyond belief. But the fact is you see these things in this film but the the other thing is that um what they did was they had the permission of either the chinese or the i think it's a chinese film so the chinese had the the permission to use dead bodies as a sort of um their um special effects and if you see things of operations on kids and stuff like that you always wonder is this a real dead body of a kid so 
once you say it once and you realise that, that that was what happened behind it, you think, no, I'm not, not for me. Although it did have another three sequels after this, believe it or not. The next film is another one from Lars von Trier and it's called Dancer in the Dark. Now this is a, it's a great film, but it's not a great film because Bjork in here is one of my favourite uh, singers and, and uh, performers. She, she's brilliant in this. She's unbelievable as this uh, very innocent and lovely person who um, is going blind. So then she wants to provide for her son. Things go wrong a little bit and she gets involved in this in this uh, sort of incident, which means she's framed for it. And it, you, know, you think that she's going to sort of get through this and it's going to be a bit uplifting at the time because the first half of the film is quite uplifting but it doesn't really go along that way and I would, must admit for the last however it is when she's on trial for this this um, this crime um, which isn't a big crime in my eyes you think yourself um, I think it's set in is it set in the 40s something like that I'm gonna guess um, I've only ever seen it once and I don't think I, well I couldn't see it again that's why it's never going to be in my things although I do like Lars von Schoen I do like Bjork the whole sort of last half of the film is so bleak and it's so nasty the fact that this this girl this person this character just has every single thing thrown at her and you just think is this ever going to stop is she ever going to catch a break is that ever going to sort of redeem is she going to redeem herself in a way of, of just something nice happening to her so i'll just leave that out there the fact that it's just so it's just so depressing and it's really soul destroying actually it's just too emotional to watch it's probably the most emo most emotional film to watch for me when you've when you've watched it you feel like you've been through an emotional ringer the next film is getting in the sort of realms of this one um which i do think is an important documentary is this one here traces of death which is more like a it's just a collection of clips from uh, newsreels or things that went wrong or things were captured on camera which is just it's obviously all real it's all brutal it's got the most um, horrible deaths in it and uh, pictures of it and it's very unflinching and it's um, it's just not a nice film in any way shape or form every time you see something happening you think wow and then the next thing that happens is worse and the next thing that happens is worse and you think how can they top this then you see something else and you think it's just an exercise into maybe can you watch a film or not now i have seen this film mate i watched it twice actually but since my son's come along 25 years ago um i changed my outlook on films a lot of um these films these mondo films they're called like these sort of like horrible lifestyle films is films that i won't touch with a barge pole now and although it's never been released in the uk i think it was even tried to be released in the 90s but they said no chance um there's been another four sequels as i say but it's um it's the most extreme i've seen of these real life murder films and i don't want to ever see it again and i would imagine there's a lot more worse things happening out there now in the world to be captured on camera but i'm um, like i say i watched i watched face of the death i didn't think face of the death was that bad in fact it's not really real is it but i did think that face of the death was entertaining in a fashion for the fact that it wasn't real or most of it wasn't real in the way it was done but this the trace of death was um just a little bit too nasty for me and a little bit too the the stuff in it was just a little bit too harrowing to see this next one is the one that came out in 1995 i think not sorry 1985 guinea pig 2 i'm going to say it is and i'm a bit confused about the guinea pig series and basically all it is is just somebody gets this person this girl drugs them puts them in a room and cuts them up with their knives and all that type of thing and that's that's all it is so yes so th this film came across as being just the most extreme film you could ever see and is it real or not but when you watched it you can blatantly see it's just special effects but the fact is there's nothing in this there's no story there's no nothing just uh, basically someone getting cut a bit and there's just nothing you can get out of that film and um, I would say that this whole guinea pig series is probably exactly the same and I've got no intention of watching any of the other ones and I don't know if you can get this film but I would not like to have this in my collection at all so anyway so yeah so number one I like most of people would uh, know what I'm going to uh, mention for number one film I would not have on my shelves I don't care if Arrow brought out the most fantastic version of it in 4k and they had the best special editions and it was numbered and everything that was part of the list say if I had a numbered set that I got from Arrow say and this was number six in it and I needed it from the collection it would not get bought because it's so uh, extreme unnecessarily extreme I find and it is a Serbian film from 2010. 
Now I saw this film, I saw it uncut, but I didn't see all of it because I turned it off. It's probably one of the only films I turned off because I was that disgusted with it. I wasn't I wasn't get the point where I was physically disgusted. I was disgusted with the fact that these filmmakers thought that this was a way that they could um go in the film. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I'm going to say the fact is there's a line you shouldn't cross. And this crossed the line and when I know when I knew that was coming, the film got switched off immediately and that was the end of that. Uh, I wouldn't imagine that anybody would love to see this film and think, oh, this is a brilliant film. I'm going to have to have this in my collection for any other purposes rather than just it is the number one film that's the most, it's probably the most offensive film you can ever see. And anybody who's got kids would know exactly what I'm talking about if you were to see films that involve certain things. So yes, so that's number one with a bullet, a Serbian film. I strongly advise people who are thinking about watching it, don't bother. You're not in for anything that's going to, Get, you're not going to get any entertainment out of this film at all. The film I find is a pretty poor film and it goes into a dark alley which I didn't like the fact that I was drawn into that, didn't have, know anything about it, should have been a big warning to say what it what it had in it. If it did have that I wouldn't have touched it with a barge pole. Okay so this is the second time I've done this video because the first time I did it, uh, it the sound went out of sync, it was a right mess and uh, I couldn't do anything with it, I had to come and refilm it so I've kept it down to a little shorter version here and hopefully this version will be in sync but I think I'm going to start to get some new editing software. Okay so you take care, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.